We've been coming to South Africa for more than 10 years. I didn't know how massive the problem is here. There's an AIDS epidemic here in this area, and, and it's spreading. The problem's never gone away. It's a really painful and kind of heartbreaking situation. It's not under control. People are still uh, dying. We have to find a way to help. I couldn't wait to come back to Africa again. You just become addicted. I have to be here at least once a year just to touch base with the life. South Africa's rich in history and rich in spirit. But they've had to overcome so many obstacles. There really isn't a middle class here. The people in these local areas live on less than a dollar a day. 1,900 people a day contract AIDS here, and 1,000 people die from it. One of the side effects from AIDS is tuberculosis, and some of the medications provided can cause sudden hearing loss. I'm feel sick because I'm not here. I'm still alone. To me, it's difficult. My brother gave me a support for this, but it's a long time and I'm suffering. Tinchalo is my younger sister. I love her very much. My sister got tuberculosis and is HIV positive. We discovered she lost hearing two years ago. It just happened to watch my sister lose her hearing. It worries me very much. I know that maybe hearing cannot cause death to a person, but regaining hearing it brings back life. In this area of Africa, we have a lot of people that are in need, and they just need a hand up. They're good people. We're going to work here in this clinic, which is supported by Richard Branson's foundation, Virgin Unite. I love you, sir. I've been coming to South Africa since I was a teenager, and I just love the Africans. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're smiling, they're singing, they're dancing and an enormous joy comes through despite all these hardships. In this region, 25% of the people are HIV positive, which means you know, that they'll die within six years unless they get antiretroviral drugs. We built the Daisy partly as a result of the death of one of our employees. The day before he died, he actually sent me a poem which said, AIDS is not a disease, it is a war that is on Africa and so we felt we needed a clinic in the area. Hey, Richard. Hi, Bill. Yeah, nice to see you. Morning. Hey, it's Thanks a great Bill. day today. Great. Richard Branson's clinic saved thousands of lives. He's one of the good people in the world that are trying to go out and make a difference. Got a young man up next. Let's see what we can do. Here we go. How long has he had difficulty here? Here? Two years. Two years. 
everybody should have the right to hear who's got the basic capabilities to hear. It's absolutely incredible today to have the Starkey organization coming here. <laughs> He's a lovely child, lovely Thanks. smile. <laughs> Give me five. All right. <laughs> it's ridiculously gratifying, yes. It's wonderful. I would never, ever, ever forget the feeling I feel right now. Seeing young kids who couldn't hear before, walking out, hearing, and knowing that, you know, the transformation that's going to make to their lives. Because I've got empathy to my, my, my sister. Seeing her losing the hearing and all those things, it is as if it's myself who have lost hearing. We tried to take her to the clinics, but they just said they can't see anything. We were coming to collect medication at Bubezi Clinic, and they told me that people will be coming to assist with hearing. I'm Snejana. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I said, I will take my sister. I will be the first person in the morning. <laughs> I, I never believed that she can regain the hearing. I'm going to start low, and I'm going to move it up until she can hear something. And to hear my sister say that she can hear, it will be the happiest day I could even think of. Pa 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 <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Problem fixed? Yeah. Good, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. She's crying because she's excited, very much excited. Because it's long she has been struggling to hear. <laughs> I feel very happy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very much happy for my sister. <laughs> We're here in South Africa to work with Richard Branson at the Bubezi Clinic, which was started by him to help people suffering with HIV and AIDS. My name is Nonchlansla Arendam Nisi. I am an HIV and TB counselor here at Bubezi. Hello. Yes, how are you? I'm good. My relationship with the patient is to test them, counsel them, give them support when it comes to HIV and AIDS. I'm not feeling very well. Today, I took a decision that I must go and see the counselor to get tested. How are you feeling? Ish, I'm scared. Scared? I'm scared. I, I heard people saying that if you are HIV positive, okay. you've got AIDS and you will die. Yeah, it makes me feel worried. I do understand that you are scared, but there is life after being diagnosed HIV positive. We do have antiretrovirals, yeah, yeah. where they help, it's ARVs. Yes. They help to suppress, okay? Okay. Many patients are hopeless, thinking that maybe they don't have, have future or life anymore. We make sure that we give them enough support. While we're still waiting for the results, any question from where we started up until now? Will I get healed or is there any cure after maybe I've tested? Is Positive. There? Yes. Okay. 
they will not exactly cure. Yeah. If you take your ARBs, you end up being undetectable. Yes. Okay? If you are HIV positive, it's going to be two lines. If you are HIV negative, it's going to be one line. are HIV positive, yeah. Yeah. but it doesn't mean it's a dense sentence. As we explained, as long as you'll be having a family support, you come for support group, you take your ARVs, then you live your life to the fullest. What kills us? It's when we don't accept. It's when we keep on denial. But if we follow the rules, there is life after being HIV positive. You'll be fine. And I'm going to give you a returning date for ongoing counseling. Because of Bubezi, I get to help them, talk to them, give them hope that there is life. It was nice meeting you. Thank you. I hope and believe that by taking the treatment, I will live long. I, I was scared, you know, because I lack knowledge before. But now I know there is still life after this long epidemic disease. There was no clinic for people in this area who had HIV, who had TB, and the problem wasn't helped by a government that you know, actually thought HIV and AIDS were not connected and were asking people not to take antiretroviral drugs. And so everybody died, basically, from it. Fortunately, that government is no longer, and this clinic gives those drugs out for free. Our employees at our clinic make sure that people are properly looked after. There's an enormous amount of work to be done. They are leading the way. Hey! Hi. Hey, guys, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Hey, how are you? My name is Jerry. I work at Bubezi. We have a lot of work here. Without the Bubezi Clinic, the people of this region would have no other means to survive, and we're here to provide support and help as many people as we can. This is Olia. She will assist, and you are going to help us to pack. Bubezi Clinic, it's a lifeline, not only this community, but for South Africa as a whole. 70 to 80 percent of the people that are coming, they are from far away. The reason why people come from so far away is because of the good care that they get from Bubezi staff. I can only imagine what someone feels like right after they find out their status. Is Those it? counselors, they doing their very tough job because mm -hmm. they don't want to be told that they're HIV positive. Some even come with a weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're doing a very good job. I can't imagine how hard the work really is. This amazing staff is impacting lives. If this clinic was not here, it would be a disaster. Is it hard to change the behavior of people? You know, it is hard for other people because of the poverty. Mm -hmm. Most especially we women. You find that I've, I'm having children. I'm not working. So men will take advantage of me. So I had to give myself to them so that they can give me money to buy something for my children. I immediately put myself in their shoes and I think about what it would be like to be a woman in Africa and not have a choice and to have the rest of the world around me telling me that I have this disease because I made poor choices when really I didn't have a choice. That makes me very, very sad. I feel honored to, to, to be the part of this clinic. The staff here, it's wonderful staff and it's dedicated. What we are doing in this community, we are really trying to, to bring change and hope. When I grew up, I had a tough life, very, very tough. In South Africa, there was apartheid, and at that time, there was a call for all young South Africans to go to outside countries to be trained for the war. As, as young as we were, at the age of 13, 14, during the apartheid, Mandela was in prison, and it was a time when violence erupted. They kill anything that is alive, from chicken to a human being. They, they destroy everything. So that is why we were there to defend the community. 
as we were outside guarding, I saw a stone coming towards me and I just jumped to grab the stone only to find that it was a grenade. What motivates me to get up is making sure that the set faces that get in at Bubezi, they get out of that office smiling. I have the love for helping the communities. I have passion for making sure that other people's lives are being changed because my life was changed by other people before. Virgin United is the umbrella global brand, and then we have smaller charities in localised areas. Pride and Purpose is part of Virgin Unite, and it's really set up to look after the community in this area. So whether it's orphanages for kids, education for kids, or medical help, those are the kind of areas that Pride and Purpose uh, tackles. Pride and Purpose is a great partnership for us to have because we share a lot of the same values. Hello, Gifty. Hello, how are you, Lindsay? Hello, how are you? I'm Lindsay Hanekom and I run Pride and Purpose. I'm the Pride and Purpose manager. This is Gift's house. She looks after some orphan children for us. Why the orphans are here pretty much is due to the HIV AIDS pandemic that is happening in South Africa. And that's also why Bubezi are so important. Whenever any of our kids are sick, we send them through to Bubezi. Our mission is to try and create sustainable living and get the people out in the villages to learn how to help themselves. There's 19 children who live here. I am looking after them, so they, they take me as a, a, a mommy. We're in a very rural area in Mpumalanga, which has got about five and a half thousand people. We do not have tarred roads that get out here. We don't have a constant supply of running water. There are government schools and there is electricity in certain places, but they're needing a little bit of assistance in moving forward. We work on a grassroots up system. We do not tell the village what they need. It's more of the village giving us the information of what it is that they are looking for. In my house, there are a lot of love. <laughs> I'm very excited with, with that because I don't have my child. So I call them my children. They're full of love. <laughs> yeah. Gifts is also an original orphan. Her mother passed away um, when she was very young. So she looks after all these children out of her own heart and helps us keep them healthy, keep them educated and keep them fed. This is Gift's kitchen. That kitchen is completely unsafe for these children and for everyone to be cooking now. So what we are going to be doing is breaking it down and building them a new one. Oh. OK? So we're going to be building just a three-walled structure, half wall, with a roof on the top that the smoke is going to be able to come out. We don't know what's going to happen with the building, guys. So if it starts creaking and moving, get the hell out of there, please. Yeah. All right. Ready? Let's yeah. do it. Good. All right. Gifty's kitchen it looks like if you just breathe on it a little bit, it, the thing's gonna fall. Okay, hey guys, now we are we are doing the, this side. David Corza is our project coordinator, and he is a local guy from the village himself. So he, um, he knows a lot of the cultural backgrounds and the history, and knows how to work inside the community. I used to work as a lodge manager, but I decided to come to work for my people because I can see that they don't know what to do to better their, their life. Okay. We look after 67 orphans. And they often have a special place in my heart. Yeah. Sure. I want them to feel like we got somebody on our side, even if our dad is not here. It is very important for me to show them that love. Good girl. I'm very proud of being a Pride and Purpose. Very, very proud because they're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, the roof is the one that is holding here. What's your feet? Okay, 
wait, 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 wait. For the volunteers to be tearing down this really unsafe old kitchen and building them a safe, hygienic kitchen is going to be life-changing for these kids. This isn't just a kitchen we're building, but this is kind of their community, and a meal to them represents family time. I think that's what this project is about. It's about making them a family. The problem of that old kitchen is it was like this. So it can break each and every time. So it can cause a problem to their children. Guys, we're going to try and save as much wood because they want to reuse it. Gifty, do you have plastic container or something we can put all the old nails into? Yes. Nothing gets to waste out in these villages. After the concrete have been mixed, then we'll start to making bricks. So all we do now, we have to mix. Do you do this? The kids uh, love to help because they know it's a place where they're going to have some food come out there. So that's the reason you see them jumping all over there. They want to make sure that the, the kitchen is get ready before the volunteers leave. <laughs> Okay. Just to show you the first brick, you will do the rest. How many bricks do we need to do? We need to... like 150 bricks. 150 oh. bricks, and that yeah. makes two. Yeah. At home, we're used to going down to the hardware store and buying bricks, but here you have to make your own bricks because they don't have the resources. Ooh. That's a nice brick. Only 149 <laughs> more to go, right? So let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. Oh, you're kidding. The pressure's on to get this kitchen up because we tore their old kitchen down. And they don't have one now, so we have to make sure we finish this one and then we gotta make sure we do it right. Fall apart. Okay, move back. You never know. Here we go. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Nice. I think that's good. All right, I'm gonna take it in. Ooh. About six more barrels and we'll be good. Okay. <laughs> We still got the roof to go on and the paint, and then we should be good. And the roof will go on tomorrow? Yeah. We need everything to just set and dry. Mm hmm And then we're set, right? And we've almost got a kitchen. All right. We've done the bulk of the work. I'm looking forward to coming back tomorrow and putting the roof on and painting it and getting it beautiful and ready to be used. We focus on quite a few different areas, and one of them, which is what we are here today, is you're going to be doing a food garden today here. Oh, no. nope. let's go, guys. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it like this. <laughs> yeah, we got it. <laughs> what are we going to be planting? We've got tomatoes, beetroot, onions, spinach, mango trees, a little bit of everything. We're going to fetch manure to you guys. Buckets of manure buckets. Are going. Okay. It is very important to grow food because most of the people here, they are not working. So once you grow the vegetable, even if you don't have money, you can have food. See, the cows are here now. Okay. Just see them, what they're doing, and after that, you take over. Okay. 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 Is that OK? Silly, I'll do the till first. Yes, you walk inside the hole. OK. Where they just the cows follow you. Follow the hole straight. All the local was doing was just not even breaking a sweat and just holding it and pushing a straight line. I'm like, oh, I can do that. Very simple. Yeah. yeah. Okay, All right, go. I just go. 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 You, you go, first. go. Go. This way. Go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Tell you what, it's a lot harder than it looks. And no, I can't. You got it. Keep it up. This guy made it like it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear David laughing in the distance as I'm struggling. Yeah. You're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> Where are you eating these cows? Steven has difficulties, you know, because he was a little bit struggling to hold on. Whoa! Uh, God, you want to slow your cows down? <laughs> this is not easy. Of course, my parents show up right as I lose control of the cows. You love the fact that Steven's doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of his kind of work. <laughs> That's what he always wanted to do. Yeah. I know I'm making it look easy. Yeah, you know, I'm making it look easy. <laughs> what? I don't hey, think he can stop. <laughs> <laughs> he has no choice. It's like a drunk driving course. Foot, 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 foot,
couldn't control the plow. I couldn't keep it in the ground and I'm using all my force and I'm puffing and puffing and it felt like I was going 100 miles an hour behind those cows. Here, stop. I'm... Stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. <laughs> when I backed away, I watched the cows and they're just creeping along. It's like I had no concept of how slow those cows were going when I was behind that plow. This is just embarrassing. Thank you. I'm not buying it, but but it's nice to say. <laughs> no, it's good. As we are walking here, we are approaching one of the lady by the name of Charity. These girls here, they have lost their parents. David wanted to take me to meet someone that he's helped through pride and purpose and to show kind of the many different people of the community. We have 67 orphans that we look after. Really? As pride and purpose. And uh, the, the way we support them, we don't, we don't have a certain area where we put everyone together. We support them where they are staying. The orphan is not just the little ones, you know. You can grow up until to the age of 20, something we still feel like an orphan. Charity will the same. So that's the reason she need our help. This is my mother's house. We used to live with her here when she was sick. Pride and Purpose doesn't only focus on the young orphans, they also focus on the young adults. And once they start helping a person, they don't stop. Let's go oh, thank inside. you. I'm 24 years old. It was hard for me when my mom died. I was in grade 12. I struggled every day. Everything that I do daily is for my young brother, and my young sister, and my daughter. I tried to maybe to, to make a plan that they eat. This is my bedroom. I share this with my young sister and my daughter. And here are my HIV and AIDS counseling certificate. This means a lot to me. I'm very proud of this certificate because now I know how to talk to people who are HIV and who are affected by HIV and AIDS. There's a lot of people who are HIV and AIDS and they have no education about that. Some of them have a belief of that when they sleep with a virgin, they're gonna be healed, which is wrong. They rape kids thinking that they, they can be kids. That's the picture of my mom there. Okay. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, thank you. I was around four when she took <laughs> that picture. I was so still that... young. There's the other one which was with me. Does that keep a good memory of your mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could see the joy in Charity's face when she showed me that picture because her mother's still alive within her, and I think her mother's the driving force behind what she does. This is my mother's grave. My mother, she was a single parent, but she raised me and she told me the importance of education. I'm where I am today because of her. How old were you when? When my mom passed yeah. away. I was 17. You took care of your mom from when you were 12 until 17. Yeah. It was very hard because of this stress, finding that my mom is sick. I was supposed to cook food and make sure that she take her medicines and pills and stuff. Then when I come back, I have to take care of the baby. It was Time. tough, it was very tough. I was mm. even thinking of quitting from school, then I said, no, I can't quit it, mm. but it was very tough. What made you want to stay in school? I wish that since my mom dies, to be a social worker or a nurse, something that will give me a job that is good so that I can make like businesses, yeah. so that I can employ people. I don't want to be a social worker only to find money. I want to help people often. So I want to see my community changing. Yeah, I want to see this village improving. You sound smarter than most of the people I know who have <laughs> education. One of the remarkable things about Charity is that she's taken her bad situation and she's turned it into a positive solution to help people. Very few people that I met have a drive like Charity and I want to do something to help her. I wish that since my mom dies, 
be a social worker or a nurse, something that will give me a job that is good so that I can make like businesses, yeah. so that I can employ people. When I hear someone talk about what they want to do and what they believe in, you know, I, I don't just listen to their story, I figure out how I can help. Well, thank you for showing me your home and I appreciate hearing your story. It was nice being with you. I'm always impressed by meeting people who want to make a change. And I think charity is one of the driving forces that can help this region. You know, one of the things that we've been doing and, you know, is finding great people who do positive work around the community and, you know, and I'd love to help, you know, pay for your education for the next three years for social working and wow. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thank you, can, you. So you can come back and help David and Lindsay. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you a lot. Oh, and uh, I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> I am very thank happy. You. I've been praying. I've been pushing, but now you really, really changed my future, my community's future and my family. <laughs> Very few people I've met have a drive like Charity, and, and one of the ways that I knew I could help her was by you know, helping her reach her goal, and that's kind of what we do and what Bill has taught me is, you know, it's help people any way that you can and help. <clears throat> help that life of one person, and you can help the community and <clears throat> and I guess I see that within charity. Do you think uh, this garden is important? Yes. yes. For the kids. For the little kids so they can yeah. eat them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, lunch. <laughs> Ladies. Yes. We are going to go and collect water. Okay. okay. Here are your buckets, one for each of you. Okay. Okay, and Florence is going to lead you to the tap. Wonderful. I know in a lot of places, 14 hours a day are spent going to get water and, and getting back water. home. Yeah. We're quite lucky with the school. Yeah. We've got a tap just across the road here. <clears throat> oh, right here. That is a blessing. And so you know how to carry this. Yeah, exactly. The traditional way of carrying water in South Africa is to place this giant bucket of water on top of your head and to balance it without using your hands while walking down the road. What? How do you do that? And then you walk. Oh, that one almost goes back. Yes. Oh! Yeah, I gotta take baby steps. Oh, this one's heavy. Oh. Bills don't make me carry water like this to him all the time. <laughs> you want to walk back? Yeah. Let's go. Oh. oh, my God. I don't even know if I can do this with hands. My arms are starting to shake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did our best, but we looked extremely silly and like we were struggling. It was very, very hard. By the time that we actually reached the garden, I felt like I was going to drop the thing. I think we might need your assistance. <laughs> to get it down. <laughs> oh. ah, thank you. This is amazing. We're planting faster than they can almost make the beds. That's fantastic. So Tanya, it's really quite great that we've also got Bubezi on our doorstep. When we were talking to Richard Branson, we knew right away that, you know, it was a good partnership. Yeah. Because we, we don't like to talk about it. We like to do it. Yeah. and be part of the community, and I, I can see you guys do too. <laughs> Virgin Night has a very holistic approach to wellness, so it's not just treating the illnesses or treating the HIV positive people through the clinics, but it's also building the community with gardens and also to grow the right vegetables that they need to have good nutrition, so it's very admirable. Creating the food garden that we have done today, and it's gonna change lives over here. When they start harvesting, about 500 people will be able to get food out of this garden because there's a lot of food going on here.
need to take this pole on the top and we have to nail the pole. There's 19 kids that live in this orphanage and this kitchen is gonna be able to cook the food that we've planted and it's gonna provide them with a sense of family. That's a good way to finish. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? He's gonna give me a roofing certificate. <laughs> Thanks, Wonder. I'm gonna put paint on it, and then I'm gonna go like this to you. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine what these kids' lives are like every single day, um, having lost their parents. Are you gonna help us? Yeah. Yes, perfect. When we're interacting with them, they just grab onto you and. It's like they want love. So sharing the love that I have with them is something that I'll never forget. We're gonna wait for this to dry and then we're gonna draw pictures on it. Yeah, we get, to, we get to have you fun know, now. Do, what do you think you're gonna draw? I want to draw a house. A house? A house? Yeah. I'm looking forward to painting this kitchen and making sure that it's finally ready to be used and Gift can get in there and start cooking for these children. And then right now, I'm gonna need your help. Yeah, let me do it. Okay. We're moving on to the last step, which is, you know, painting this kitchen, and it's important that it looks good. And it's keeping these orphans' spirits up and knowing that somebody cared about them. Hey. Hello. <laughs> it looks like yeah. a moon. Does that look like a cloud? That's not a cloud. What does it look, it doesn't look like a cloud? Why don't you dress some flowers down here? Flowers. Flowers. Which color? Any color. Like go, go get it. Go get it. Good job. <laughs> High five. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very excited to get a new kitchen. <laughs> guys, ready? On three, two, three, go. Woo! <laughs> <It's a big one. laughs> Yesterday when we arrived, we saw a shack that was leaning over and looked like it could collapse at any moment. And today we have a solid structure. This project has made it possible for the 19 orphans that live in this home and the entire community to continue to come together and continue to have meals together and take care of each other. Take your pup, then you take a bit of a sauce or some meat, you mix it all together, and you eat. And mm. This is the meal they wanted to prepare for us with this new kitchen. And you know, it just happens to be chicken heads and chicken feet, and they call it walkie-talkie. <laughs> this is what it's about, and it's about eating together with the people that we're helping and sharing their stories. This has nails and everything. Oh, wow, that's delicious. Pretty good. Being able to provide them with this new kitchen and breathe new life into the place that I know is so integral to a family, it's amazing. <laughs> Our culture is, if you appreciate something, you show it by dancing. It shows that you definitely appreciate what you, you have, you've got. One of the biggest things that I've seen here is how everyone that I've met can affect the life of this community. Meeting people like, you know, Charity and meeting people like David and Lindsay and Jerry, it's fueled me to want to do more and to want to keep going because it gives me hope, um, you know, that people can make a difference. Lovely, lovely, jubbly. I'm very happy for the people because it's the beginning of everything. So we are going far together. <laughs> Good job. The mission in South Africa is just a great foundation for the future because they're smart people. They want to make progress. They want to be part of a better community. And it's easy to do if we just listen to them and share with them what we have that will fit what's missing in the piece of the puzzle. The hands of many accomplish 
unbelievable things. I am very, very happy now, and I'm glad that I'm going to help my community and my family. My dream has come true. <laughs> when I wake up, then I hear the chickens, everything. <laughs> I feel like I'm a newborn baby. In... <laughs> hey, all right. Every single one of us can play a part in trying to change the world. I think that the greatest satisfaction that anybody will get in their lives is when they make a difference to somebody else's life. Thank you.